How good is it to be home with family, with our Father? So good.
wonderful you are, Lord. God, oh God, you're wonderful. God, oh God. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know, there's so much to thank God for. You know, He gives us, he gives us sight. He gives us sight when we're blind. When we can't see the way forward, He helps us to see the way forward. When there's no courage in our hearts, He put courage, courage in our heart to, to face the difficulties that lie before us. Our God is a wonderful God. Oh, Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's raise it again and shout to God. God, there's so much of gratitude in our hearts. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. As, as it focuses you on who God is and, and it reminds us that, that He's in charge. He's in control, which is such a beautiful thing. So thank you, God, for being in charge and in control. This is your first time in church. Welcome. This is your first time in a while. We're so glad you're here. Your first time you've joined us in a while or you're joining us for the first time online. We're so glad that you're here because there's a moment when you and God can connect and God can touch your life. And, and when that moment happens, anything is possible. Miracles occur when heaven and earth connect. Look out. Here comes God and he's making a beeline, a straight path towards you. And our call is to make a straight path towards Him. Make straight paths is where we're headed this year. And it's the focus of this month in our vision month. I want to read your scripture as we continue in prayer just right now. And it says from Psalm 139, Search me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Do you know that God, God already knows? And so it's a bit of a silly thing, isn't it? To say, well, God, why would you search me? Actually, it's God, God, I'm giving you permission to work in my life. That's what he's talking about. God, you've got permission. Give, give God permission today to work in your life. And he's going to sort some things out. Can, can we pray this together? Can you say this with me? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that you would do that in each of our lives here today. God, make a straight path in us. Work in our lives. Work in our lives. Work in our lives. And as we're standing here on our feet and we've been praying for ourselves, let's pray for those in our family members, people on our heart today, who's got someone that they need prayer for today, that they'd love to see God come and work in their life, there's a family member, a friend, colleague at work, just, just raise a hand and say, yeah, this is me, there's someone in my life I would like God to work, my little grandson, Theodore, not well, Jesus, praying for him today, who are you praying for? Just right now, begin to pray. Would you pray? God, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we're praying for our family members and friends who need you this moment. For people we know are not well, we pray for healing to flow into their life. God, we pray for your presence to descend upon them, your miracle-working power to activate in their hearts and their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, 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 let miracles occur. Let miracles occur. I wonder if you know of someone today that needs that needs Jesus. They're away from God, or maybe they've never met God. Would you? Who's got a family member or friend that you'd love to see come to know Jesus? I, I, I do. I got some people in my world I'd love to see Jesus come, come to them. Come on, let's pray. God, God, we pray for our family members, friends, work colleagues, people, people we know that need Jesus. And Father, we name them before you, and we say, Holy Spirit, come to them today. Come to them today, reveal yourself to them and draw them and lead them in the path of everlasting life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Turn up in dreams, turn up in visions, turn up, God, in encounters, turn up in conversations they have with people in their world. Father, 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 we, we ask you in Jesus' name, the same Holy Spirit that touched our life and drew us to you, God, draw them to you, draw them to you draw them to you. Father, we thank you for the promise of Scripture that says 
that says, it says, if we ask, we'll receive. If we seek, we'll find. If we knock, the door will be opened. God, so Father, we're bringing them to you and confidently that you hear our prayer. If you hear us, you will answer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whose name are we praying these prayers in? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you thank him? Say, God, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for working in their life. Amen. Amen. Would you like to be seated? Wonderful. Go have a chair at home. So glad to have you joining us online today. Those of you who are joining us online. Lots of, lots of chat in the chat box here. G'day, Steph. How you doing today? Good to see you online. Everyone else is online. Bless you. May the Spirit of God touch your life. Such a beautiful thing. I'm not sure where I'm up to, my, what I'm supposed to be talking about here this morning. I'm just having a good time. I know a little bit later, Mal's going to bring us a message. And, and uh, he's been sharing with me what his message is about. You, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. This is going to touch a lot of people's lives. And so, so get ready. Get ready for this. This, this, this month is Vision Month. I want to give you a brief update as to, as to what we're on about in Vision Month. In Vision Month, we're letting you know that, that these are the things that God has put upon our heart for this year. That the key scripture, the key scripture that, that goes with this is Hebrews 12 and 12 and 13. And it says, so take a new grip with tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but will become strong. Mark out a straight path for your feet. And it's praying about what God was calling us to do and calling us to, to proceed in this year. Make straight paths was what was implanted upon my spirit. As we, as we met with our core team or some of our team on uh, January the 16th and, and we prayed and said, God, God, help us to go to unpack this and to work out what's the next things for us and what's the important thing for us to do and to, and to take a hold of this year. You know, there were three things we came down to. One, one is, one is build, build healthy teams. Second one is let our groups multiply. And the, and the third one is let's make disciples, both online and, and in person. Because really at the end of the day, that, that's what the commission of the scripture is, go and make disciples. And we started unpacking them and, 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 and thinking about how, to, how does that look and what does that, what does that look like? Building healthy teams is, first of all, starts with us being healthy, yeah? Because you want our team to be healthy, we've got to be healthy. And so, so you'll keep hearing during the course of this year, God wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be well, and, and He wants our relationships to be well, because that's, that's how we can have healthy teams. And healthy teams are well when there's lots of, lots of people in the teams. Uh, it's, it's about making spaces for belonging. One of the chats I've had consistently as I've been talking about this with people is go, wouldn't it just be simpler, Pastor Don, if we just, we just rationalized things and made, and made, and made uh, uh, less places for people to serve in God's house? Because there's, some people are under pressure. We don't want people to be under pressure or overworked. Please, because that's not healthy. Teams will never be healthy if you're too much under pressure, under too much pressure. However, having said that, having said that, it's, it's, it's important for us that we keep making spaces for people to be able to belong. Because I know this, that, that, as, that as we, uh, in a home, pick up the tea towel, we feel like we belong. As, as we get involved with what's happening in a home, we belong. And we want to make spaces and places where people can belong. And so constantly, there'll, there'll be some gaps, there'll be some spaces and please, please don't feel like you've got to pick up and do what, you, what extras that you can't do, but just let a space be there and say, God, who else can be part of this team? Who else can help us? Who else can come? And God will provide. He will bring people in to fill teams and to multiply. And groups are just so important for us, small groups, because that's, that's really how we do health. I'm so blessed by the beautiful stories that I'm hearing and seeing 
through our small groups, that, that as people are praying together, as people are expressing what God's doing in their life and, and where their points of pain are, that the people have actually been becoming transparent, which is like, wow, you, you, you mean I don't have to put a face on? I can actually be real? Yep, because that in that space, Jesus comes and lives happen lives get transformed as miracles occur when people say please pray for me and and beautiful miracles beautiful miracles are occurring it's 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 about helping us to be the people that god wants us to be let's 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 go down the path of becoming great disciples of jesus which means we've got to help others become followers of jesus too make straight paths are you in this in this make straight paths come on let's make straight paths this, this is our task. This is our call. As, as we shift gears a little, but re- really it's just an outworking of being a great disciple of Jesus. We, we, we bring offerings to him. Some, some of us bring our offerings on a Wednesday. Others a Tuesday. Some a Thursday. Some a Friday. Some a Saturday. Some a Sunday. And some, some will do that just in, this, just in this moment. Either hop online and through, through the uh, website, get the coordinates, or, uh, or, or hop online because you already got the coordinates and, and choose to give. We, we, we give, we give because God is an incredible God. One of the things that's on my heart that I wanted to talk about today is, is, is this. I'm convinced there's a season of blessing that's coming to you. I'm convinced there's a season of blessing coming to you. I'm hearing stories of people being blessed. I'm hearing stories of God touching people's lives and, and, and wonderful things happening in their world personally. And prayers have been praying are like, like coming to pass right at this moment. And so, so get ready, get ready for the blessings of God. As, as the scriptures record uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 8, I want to point you there this morning and remind, remind you, don't forget, it's the Lord who gives you the ability to create wealth. It is the Lord who provides. And so please continue to locate your heart in, in the blessings of God and recognizing that He is the one who has provided for you. Recognize that He is the one who has provided for you. Don't forget that. How, how do I keep remembering that? Well, I bring my tithes diligently into the house of the Lord. And I have to review that because God keeps blessing me and going, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Let's, let's, let's do this. Oh, there's this blessing that's coming. I've been praying for and working on for about three years. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. I'm getting ready to bring my tithe on that because God, God is the one who has helped this to happen. It's, it's, it's a scripture that was given to the children of Israel on the journey from Egypt to the promised land. Your promised land's coming. And it says this, when you have eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord, your God. I'm reading from Deuteronomy and chapter 8, picking up verse 10. Be, be sure to praise the Lord for, for the good land He has given you. But it is in that time, be careful, beware of your plenty. You do not forget the Lord your God and disobey His commands, regulations, and decrees that I'm giving you today. For when you become full and prosperous and have built your fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and your herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful, do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Remember that God has blessed you. He has delivered you. God has delivered you, and which is a beautiful. And that verse, verse 18 says this, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to be successful. The Lord gives you power to be successful in order that to fulfill the covenant He has confirmed with your ancestors with an oath. You know, you, we get blessed because God said He will bless His people. And we're one of his people. We get blessed because God said he would bless his people. Isn't that awesome? All I have to do is be one of his people. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. But don't forget. We won't forget. Why don't you say this? We won't forget. We won't forget. We won't forget. So, Father, 
today we bring our offerings to you, we bring our tithes to you, we present them to you. And we say, God, we're not forgetting. You're our God and we're your people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Beautiful you are, Lord. Wonderful. Mm, wonderful. 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 God, you're good. Is God good? Yeah? So look out. Here comes the blessings of the Lord. As the uh, offering attendants are moving around, if you've got cash you wanted to give today, then please, please go ahead and do that. God bless you. And if you want to make your electronic transfer and... Hey, hey, hey uh, the Vision Builders team are preparing for the, for the we, we had an, our pre-start meeting for the playground out the front. It's, and, 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 we're, and we're looking at starting by the 12th of, of uh, March, which, which means it should be completed by Easter. So uh, please pray for the Vision Builders team. And yeah, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that, yeah. Is that good news? Yeah. Kids your size, or little ones, it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty cool. It'll be pretty cool. And and could you could you pray for the pastoral team as they meet today? Because this team of people look over all the areas of care from the connect groups through to the toddlers. And and uh, please pray for this team of people as they meet together, that they that have the, the unity of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God. As, as they encourage people to, to love God and to progress in their walk with Him. Yeah? Can you pray for them in the meeting today? I, I'd appreciate your prayers. Thank you. I think it's time to sing one more song, to worship God some more as, as we prepare for Mao to come preach. You ready? Thank you, Renee. Thank you.
our praise this morning. Lord, we, we bow down on our knees this morning and say, Jesus, Jesus, I just want, I want you. I want you. We just seek after you this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. These guys. I have to thank Renee and the team this morning um, because it seems like almost every time I try and get up to preach, um, they're leading us into the presence God, of God and I get wrecked uh, before I start preaching so I can't, uh, I can't sort of articulate words or anything like that. So thank you once again for your amazing... You're amazing. I don't know what. It's just amazing. You guys are awesome. Please take your seats, everybody. We are um, in for a great morning this morning. The title of the message this morning is called Make a Way. Um, it, it's not new. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not original. Uh, make a way where there is no way. Make a way, make straight paths in the desert, all those kind of things. I want to I take us back um, to Prophet Malachi uh, ends up saying the last couple of words in the Old Testament. And then we have 400 years of silence. And then Luke chapter 3 kicks in. uh, In verse 1 it says, Now the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, the Roman emperor, Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea. Herod Antipas was ruler over Galilee. His brother Philip was a ruler over Iturea and Trachonitis. Did well there. Lysanias was a ruler over Abilene. And Annas and Caiaphas were the high priests. And at this time, the message didn't come to Tiberius, the Roman emperor. It didn't come to Pontius Pilate. It didn't come to Herod Antipas. It didn't come to his brother Philip. It didn't even come to Annas and Caiaphas, the high priests at the time. At this time, a message from God came to John the son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. And that's where I want us to start today, because we've got a guy who wasn't a person of great importance. And so the message, first thing, the first little tidbit for today is that you don't have to be someone of great importance for God to speak to you. You just have to be ready for it. And John was ready, John was prepared Uh, for his whole life, but he was out in the wilderness. And that's the other side of things. God speaks to you, not in the the palaces, not in the, the, the big wheels of industry, sometimes, thankfully not in this place, but sometimes not even in church, but he speaks to you in the wilderness, all right? And, um, you, you've got to know today that your place of revelation comes in the wilderness, And that is a a theme throughout the whole of Scripture. If you want revelation, it is going to come in the wilderness. And by revelation, by the way, let me translate that for you. God speaking to you, all right? God connecting with you. God needs us to be a voice in that wilderness, all right? We need to be that voice that's crying out in somebody else's wilderness as well. John goes then on uh, to talk about repentance, and um, I've, got a, I've got another verse here, uh, Luke 3, 4. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, Here's a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. God is saying to you this morning, make a way. Make a way through that wilderness. God needs us to be that voice. He, he's, um, and, and John is actually then going on to talk about repentance. He's standing before a whole heap of people who over the last 400 years... We've got a whole heap of things that have gone on. We've got more religious laws that they've got to put into place. We've got more uh, things that they, they keep on putting onto the surface of everything. They, they keep on uh, just basically trying to make all these rules and regulations to get to God, and they're missing the point. And the point was this. John was actually having a go at the fakeness of his generation, and he was calling them to be radically vulnerable before God. So he's having a go at the fakeness of his generation. He's actually, his solution to building up this highway was a return to transparency before God and people, right? And that's what, this this clearing of the way 
is what prepared the way for the Messiah, prepared the way for Jesus Christ. Transparency before God. And that's really what I want to talk to you, to you about today. Because um, mm, I needed that. That was good. Um, back in ancient Greece, they used to have these people and they would stand on these stages and they, they'd be these big amphitheatres, which are really cool, by the way, uh, because they, they seem to make the sound just go all the way around and they don't need microphones or amplifications. That's not the point for today, though. The point is that they had these people and they had these big um, clay masks that they would wear on their faces and they called them something. Does anyone know what they were called? Not, not Rebecca? No, the people. The people. What were the people called? The people, we would call them actors, right? But the Greeks didn't use the English language, so they called them Hippocrates, which is where we get the word hypocrite. All right, so these people were wearing a mask, and basically John was standing up in front of people and saying, you've got to get rid of the veneer. You've got to get rid of the mask, right? Because God wants to see you and other people need to see you and they need to see who you really are. They don't need to see who you fake are, all right? They don't need to see the hypocr hypocrite. Now, often we've, got, we've taken it to be offended by the word hypocrite, but that's all it means. It means that you have got a big mask on. We've got this veneer on. Um, we, we feel like we never measure up because everybody else is wearing these veneers. Um, and Jesus went on to say a little bit further that we're whitewashed tombs, that we're dead on the inside, but it's all painted nicely on the outside. So if we want to make a way and clear the way, we've got to solve that problem. Um, and you know what? Is it okay to be vulnerable and exposed? Is it? Is it really okay to be vulnerable and exposed? Because I know sometimes people, you know, don't, don't kind of go that way. I'll tell you the story about Thomas. Now, Thomas was one of Jesus' disciples. Jesus had, had died and had resurrected, and he'd seen all the other guys, but Thomas had missed out. And Thomas is, Thomas is uh, upset and uh, a, a bit annoyed by the whole thing, and, 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 he's, and he said, look, seriously, you know, like, unless I see this for my, with my own eyes, I'm, I'm not going to be happy. And some people have actually taken that as a bad thing, but that's actually a good thing, because Thomas was like, I need to see this. I've got to see this. Then Jesus appears before him and he said, stick your hand in here and in here. Just put your hand in there, right? He, and and not, not in an angry way or anything like that, but he, he was saying, I want you to touch my scars. I want you to touch my wounds. I, I died and I was resurrected and this, this is what I did for everybody. This is what I did for you, Thomas. This is my vulnerability. And you know, that place of revelation where, where we are vulnerable, that is where God does his work. And we've got the, the saviour of all mankind standing in front of, front of Thomas and basically saying, I want you to touch where I'm vulnerable. Vulnerability is our strength. You know, Revelation 12, 11, I haven't got Je uh, Jesse there, but it says we overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and we did not love our lives to the death. All right? And that's it, our word of our testimony. What is our testimony? Our testimony is where we were vulnerable, where we were without hope, where we were in a place of desolation and Jesus Christ reached down and touched us in our place of vulnerability. All right? Bob Goff says this, it doesn't matter what our faith looks like, it matters what it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it matters what it is. Let's be real. Let's be vulnerable, and I'm going to be vulnerable for a minute. Here's the mask. I'm just going to take that off now because I can stand up here and I can, I can, you know, you've got to have a bit of energy when you're preaching and you've got to push it forward a little bit. But you know what? Recently, I've been super disappointed. As a matter of fact, my family has been disappointed. We've been disappointed and kicked in the guts about three or four or five times. My daughter has, my, my wife has, I have. You know, there's a whole heap of instances, and of course I'm not going to say that on YouTube uh, exactly what it was, but we, you know, there's a whole heap of instances where you're just like, really? That is just not fair. It is not right. And then you start asking questions like this. 
I thought God rewarded faithfulness. Have I not been doing enough? Um, is my family invisible? Because sometimes we feel like we are. Um, you know, we're the ones that everyone steps over to get to where they want to get to, right? And we help them along the way, but they step over the top of us. Like, that's how you feel. What more do I need to do? You know, like, like do I need to do something else? You know, you start asking these questions. And so what do I do with that disappointment? And here's the clincher. I react. I don't react to everybody because you put the mask on, right? And then you react to the people that are closest to you. You blame shift. It's their fault. It's all them. They're the ones who, you know, and we know the story. Um, you start to move into comparison, which is, goes together with blame shift. You're like, well, I'm not as good as. They are better than me. Why do they get all the breaks? Why do they get all the whatever, right? So you start to focus elsewhere. You're not focusing on God. You're just certainly focusing on yourself and you, and, and you lose focus in all sorts of things. And here's, here's my favourite, and I've been doing this as well. You invent the truth from your perspective. You suddenly invent this truth that doesn't exist because there's a lot of perspectives out there there's, you know, there's that whole thing, that, you know, where's the truth? Well, there's your, your opinion, there's my opinion, and then there's the truth. You know, there's, there's, there's all of those things. God is always interested in who we are and that we see ourselves laid bare before him and it's then that he can do his deepest work. Are you going to be vulnerable today? I've just laid it all bare. I haven't laid everything bare because I can't, right? Because of... Exactly. Um... The, the scripture in the middle of all of this that God dropped into my heart was this. It comes from Ephesians 4 verse 2. Always, by the way, this was really fun to get this scripture because I'm like, are you serious? Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So I'm like, all right, well... I guess I've got two options here. I can either do this or I can, you know, keep on whinging and grumbling and complaining and having issues, right? And, and that's the thing. God wants to challenge us to be humble and gentle and make allowance for each other's faults. And the rest of Ephesians, by the way, read Ephesians 4 and just read it over and over and over again. And I tell you what, if you're feeling frustrated and you're feeling like people are annoying you and you're feeling all of those things, that's a really, really good scripture for God to speak to you. Um, in because uh, the rest of it is is incredible and it's just like that particular verse there you know i'm going to keep making mistakes i'm going to keep misjudging people and so are other people that's the thing i do it we all do it right but i need to be patient and i need to make allowance for that but i think i need more that's not enough because i'd like you to to take you back to genesis so, Jesse, if you can just bring up Genesis 1-1 there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, I heard a guy recently, I am not a Bible scholar, so I'm, I'm doing second-hand Bible scholar stuff right now. He said the word bara. So the word create there is the word bara, the, the Hebrew word bara. Now our English language is really, really ordinary. It doesn't really open up what that actually means. We just see create and we're like, okay, he painted a picture. You know, it, it, that's, that's the, the extent of, um, you know, obviously he did more than that, but, um, you know, it, it's very limited. So in uh, that particular word for create, the subject of the sentence in Hebrew, in the whole of, of the Bible, is always God, is never us. So whenever you see that word create, it is always God who is the subject of, uh, and doing the creating, all right? We can't because we aren't the original creator. We are just people that, that use his stuff that he's created and, and do, do our thing. Um, and the other thing is the context of the creation. Where did it come from? desolation a void nowhere maybe a wilderness if you like 
So if you are in a place of a, of a wilderness, if you're in a place where, where, where you feel like you're at the end of it, if you're in a place where you feel like empty inside, then you need to do something that David did. Because this word bara is used in, in another place in the Bible. After David had um, committed adultery, had murdered the man, uh, the, the husband of the person who he committed adultery with, and Nathan the prophet had come and basically said, uh, called him out on it. And shortly after that, David uh, says these words in Psalm uh, 151. Create bara in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I can't create a clean heart in me. I can't fix myself. I can't will my own self to try and get out of the mess that I'm in. The only person that can do that is God, and he always can, and he always will. And God is wanting today to do that. He is wanting today to create in us a clean heart. We're empty, we're broken, we've, we've, we've made mistakes. He wants us to be vulnerable before him. And just like John the Baptist said, clear the way. So that, so that he can create in us a cleanness, create in us a newness, create in us and refresh us. Um, and so right now, the Holy Spirit is challenging you and me. This is a challenge for me right now, right? I'm not standing up here saying this is not a challenge for me. It is totally a challenge. It's going to be a challenge next week. It's going to be a challenge next year. And every single time I have to keep on going back and saying, God, I'm empty, I'm broken, I suck at this. Create in me a clean heart. Change me. Are you being real to yourself today? Is there a nagging emptiness inside? Are we convincing ourselves of our own self-worth? Do we need God to create in us a clean heart in our place of brokenness and emptiness? You know, if you've been listening to me right now, and you're saying, you know what, I don't know this God at all. I don't know who this is, um, you know, online, or wherever, um, or, or I've heard of this God, but I was just so not aware that in my place of brokenness, he can come and he can make me clean, he can make me new, he can transform my life. If that's you today, um, I'd just sort of like you to all stand with me just for a minute, and online, um, in a moment I'm going to ask you to respond to something, so... Um, Please be ready. <laughs> so if, uh, if everyone could bow their heads and close their eyes right now so that nobody's looking at anyone else. Um, if that's you and in this place you're feeling like, you know what, I'm, I'm broken and I need Jesus. I need Jesus in my life. Please, why don't you raise your hand? I'd love to pray for you right now. And those people online, please uh, press the response uh, button that's available there and we've got people ready to pray, pray with you and, and God is going to touch you and God is going to make your heart new and it's going to be amazing let's all pray together dear Jesus thank you for what you've done for me I thank you for your transforming power touch my heart and change my life I want you to be my Lord and my Saviour. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer right then and you meant it, God is doing a work in your heart right now. He's changing your heart right now. And your life will never, ever be the same. Such a, such a wonderful thing. Um, that's, that's it for me right now. To be perfectly vulnerable, um, I'll hand it over to Pastor Don. If we want to take it further. Beautiful, beautiful. What a what a wonderful message. Is that helpful today? Helpful to you? Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks, Mal. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining us online and reach out if you would love some prayer. The team are there ready to uh, pray with you today and, and online connect groups. 
and, uh, and also a, a teaching class is happening and people are registering already and letting us know about that. So please, please drop a, drop a uh, mention in the uh, at prayer or uh, info at c3rabina.org.au. We'd love to hear from you and uh, 